she was a proud girl. It got worse and worse. She hurt more and more. Hi, it's Tracy. Hi, Tracy. Hi. Uh, you're taking a lot more dialogue now. Well, what happened was I ran out of Vicodin ES, and and so I decided I would just take the dilaudid until it ran out. Tracy, your official dose is one three times a day. If you exceed that dose, they, the pharmacy calls us, the nurses, I mean, it sets off all sorts of alarms, and then they start looking at you like you're, you know, selling drugs on the street. So I know you're not, okay? But if, if you and I decide on a given dosage for a, you know, a certain prescription, you have to stick with it or let us know in advance that you're changing it. We've always wondered why you write this, the lowest dose. Well, did, you know, why, why aren't you writing the biggest, the dose that I'm taking? Yeah, the, the reason that I'm writing the lowest possible dose is because of the problems that we run into from the pharmacist regarding the amount of pain medications that are going toward you. Every time we have a prescription go through, they frequently call us and they say, are you sure? Is this real? So they don't usually, it's very rare that they get pain prescriptions to, of this magnitude. Well, well, I don't know what the hell to say because I'm in pain and I have, there's nothing, I can't do anything about it. I don't, you know, I don't know what to say. Well, I, I can't do three a day. Forget it. I can do ten a day just, yeah. and live and still be miserable and be unable to watch TV because my eyes hurt and my back hurts and my legs hurt. I will not make it through this weekend if I'm this sick and in this much pain. It's impossible to make it through. For someone like her, life really becomes a chore to just from moment to moment. She is really spending most of her time trying to accommodate her pain. And, and the lifestyle that someone like this has is, is terrible because their whole life is devoted to living with this illness. And for them, this illness is no less than just about any other illness that I can think of, including AIDS and cancer and most any other illness. The severe pain and debilitation that they have is, is really profound. I think that Tracy um, was despondent and frustrated by the severe symptoms that she was having from the disease and also by the lack of, of what she considered quality help from the medical profession. And I would have to, I was Tracy's doctor and I would include myself in that. Um, I was not able to see the, and respond to the amount of pain and frustration that she was having. I don't blame her. She fought for three and a half years with incredible courage to try to get well. She got worse and worse. She finally just gave up. This is Tracy's suicide letter to her private doctor. Here I sit amongst OTC drugs, prescription drugs, plastic bags. My life is bags and drugs, bags and drugs. Every day I hung on the edge. Maybe today will be tolerable. That's all I asked for. Maybe I'll be able to tolerate it all today again and again and again and again and again and again and again barely hanging on hoping only for comfort today this hour this half hour please god take the pain away just for a while just for the next 15 minutes just for an hour why is that so much to ask? A little girl was in our group committed suicide, and I asked Dr. What killed her? Excuse me. What killed her? He said, uh, she killed herself. I said, you son of a bitch. Excuse me, we're framing. I said, she died of the disease. Jim Haw came down with syphids eight years ago. He lives with his wife and two sons outside Reno, Nevada. Unlike Tracy, who suffered with intractable pain, Jim's most disabling symptom is severe cognitive dysfunction. 
I, I was a, a workaholic, well-educated. Involved in real estate? I was involved in real estate. I bought this 3,800 acres out here. I built 400 homes. I was very involved. Uh, I was involved in all the councillors and the regents and all the people in town, very politically. And I got sick. For two years, I laid in bed 22 hours a day. Like so many other CIFID's patients, Jim got little support from his doctor. Uh, he was a schmuck. Uh, I knew I had something terribly wrong, and I went in for a biopsy. He said, you're too young to have liver problems. Uh, and it's all in your head anyway. And you're overweight. And you're lazy. And you're lazy. I had Jimmy at home on IVs for about a year. I was furious that this man did not give me the credibility of being a, a, a someone in the commit. You know, I'm director of the YMCA. I was till I got sick. I mean, you know. It took us. We had to go through about two or three doctors until we were at, were able to find one that understood. But there was little the doctor could do. Jim's condition deteriorated. Yeah. I, I started to not be able to speak right. And I have always had a silver tongue. And uh, keep me keep me on the spot. Yeah. He, you were always able to speak right. And then when you became sick, you started having trouble. With then I got an MRI, MRI. MRI. And they said you've got punctate lesions in the forefront of your brain, which causes Speech problems. Speech problems in, uh... Walking problems. Balance. Balance, yeah. But I don't Memory. know Memory. Memory. So I, I, I remember every nickel that happened 20 years ago. I remember everybody. But I wouldn't remember your name, and I didn't even remember when I came to see you last. It, you know... Very little short-term memory. No, almost none. This afternoon, Jimmy will go lay down and take a nap, and he'll wake up, and he won't even remember that this happened. Um, he may have seizures all afternoon, and he won't remember that that happened. And he doesn't rem realize a lot of times that he's sick. Everybody says you should live one day at a time, but when you get into a situation like this, you do live one day at a time. One day Jimmy may wake up and that day he can't speak, or that day he can't walk. I take him out when he's doing good and when he's not doing good, I protect him. The depression is so bad. I've, I've, put a, I've put one of my guns to my head and pulled the trigger for hours. It wasn't loaded. I just wanted to see if I could do it. And then I decided that I couldn't abandon my children because they would say, Daddy killed himself, and I can't do that to my children. I'm fortunate that I am a nurse and that I can take care of Jim, or else he would require nursing care. My life is hell. If there's a heaven there, life is, hell is right here. Hell, I'm living in hell. Most people with syphids are not as sick as Tracy or Jim. For many people, the symptoms wax and wane and may even go into remission for days, months, or years. But at the slightest exertion or stress, or apparently without provocation at all, they may again fall seriously ill. Chronic fatigue and chronic fatigue syndrome are two different things. Chronic fatigue is a symptom that occurs in virtually every illness. Chronic fatigue syndrome is a cluster of many, many symptoms, and it is a disease. It's not being tired at the end of the day. And there's no way rest will make you not tired. You'll still be tired when you wake up. I wouldn't know when the curtain would close on my day, you know, whether it was going to be 10 a.m., 11 a.m., 2 p.m. But it got 
a little bit scary because I wasn't able to physically take care of myself anymore. I was in a bed for a year, wheelchair, and the whole bit. However mild or severe their symptoms, Sifid's patients share the experience of countless visits to doctors, endless tests, mounting costs, and few answers. I have now lost all of my peripheral vision. I am also losing my frontal vision. I've got aortic and mitral valve prolapses in the heart. I've got epileptic-like seizure disorder. I have inflammation of the interior of the veins. And I have lesions on the brain. And still, with all of this, my chart is riddled with the words somatic and psychiatric.